The likes of Nikkei and Kospi, they are doing well in trade today. On inflation, it is too soon to say whether the recent readings represent more than just a bump. Don't expect any changes in rates or stance just yet. I mean, the range shifts to 24, uh, 22, 640 to 22, 830. That's the broad range. Retail disbursals are up more than 33% YOY. We are starting at, yeah, new highs. 22,554 is where the start is at, 120 points higher. There are cycles and then there are counter cycles which is happening, which in my view is a little bit of a risk for earnings going forward. The Nifty has tripled from those levels after it crossed 22,533 this morning. The Nifty and the Sensex are sluggish. They're in the red, not by a whole lot, just down about a quarter of a percent. Board will consider issuing equity or convertible securities amounting to 2,075 crore. Markets have recovered quite a bit from the lows. Well, the markets have recovered. I think uh, markets have bought the dip once again. Uh, it's an incredible session once again. This is Closing Bell. We are coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Moti Rosewald Studios. Uh, the next one hour of markets, I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues Reema and Surubi here and Nigel is joining us from the, the uh, newsroom floor. Guys, hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. I'm going to jump at it and say it first because we don't get to say it very often. Banks are leading the rally. Now, I don't remember the last time we made that statement, right? I, mean, I don't remember the last... I, I, I don't think... I don't remember the last time I said HDFC Bank is the top gainer contributing <laughs> the most to the Nifty's rally, contributing the most towards the Nifty <laughs> Bank and the big boy has come into form and that's good news and that explains why we're still holding up. <laughs> Rima, your IT is also doing well. IT is all, IT's joined the party, right? <laughs> so, I think that's what's changed in the last two hours is that Nifty IT is now at the day's high. Yeah. So it's recovered quite a bit. It's it was in the red, are, now it, it's up. It's private banks and it's IT. Right. So, uh, you know, it's by the dip, right? That mantra is well and alive. And uh, the market, by the way, is recovered uh, from the day's low. Uh, it's recovered very strongly. I think it's about a... Uh, I think the low was 22,300. Uh, now, we've come off a little bit from the high, but uh, it's, it's nice and... It's a very nice pullback, really. Uh, so, the, from the 11 a.m. low, right, that was the second dip which came, uh, the markets recovered 200 points uh, from that level. Bank Nifty is higher. It's up about 1%. Largely, I think you should say a big thank you to HDFC Bank, but a few others as well. And, of course, IT services is the other part of the market which is holding up things very well. There's an exclusive story flashing at the bottom of the screen which we will get to in just a bit from now. It's a long-running saga, but maybe it's in this closing chapters now. But, uh, guys... Well, you know, the Nifty has recovered close to about 250 points from the day's low. The mm. day's low today was 22,300, to be precise. And now we're at 22,550. So it's been a good 250-point recovery from the lows. Now, banks have been doing well from, you know, the word go. From morning, you know, we've got the banking index up close to about half a percent, courtesy HDFC Bank. And that continues to drive the gains. But IT, as we said, has joined the party. So names like Tech Mahindra, TCS, LTI Mindtree, Wipro, these are stocks with gains of 1.5% to 2%. That's Nifty IT for you. In the morning, Nifty IT was down, and now it's up 1.5%. So, you know, the change that's taken place is courtesy many of these, uh, you know, IT names. And perhaps the view is that maybe in the second half of the year, at least, things are not looking so bad. And the correction that we've seen in the last one month may price in the near-term disappointment related to earnings. And it's always uh, about sort of, you know, are we at the bottom? I think that's been the consistent debate with IT. It started somewhere, I mean, uh, you know, last quarter and it, it continues. And I guess that's the, the punt, so to speak, or that's the call that the market's trying to make, that if you're at the bottom, this is the worst, buy here, and it gets better from here on, right? No, absolutely. I think uh, there is consensus that we are at the bottom, maybe yeah. December, maybe, you know, the March mm -hmm. quarter. It's just the pace of recovery, right? Does it come in June or does it come in the December quarter? Yeah. I think the pace and the extent of the, up, yeah. you know, uptick from the bottom is what the street is watching. Absolutely, and that's the next event that the market will look out for. The, the current one actually is uh, more from the BFSI space, uh, which is the policy tomorrow. And today, actually, quite a bunch of BFSI stocks are up and about. We'll, of course, talk more about HDFC Bank. And that deposit number is something that the market has really liked, the deposit mobilization. But even others, a lot of small finance bank stocks, for instance, they are up and about. If you look at uh, Suryoday Small Finance Bank, that's been up 9%, 10% right from the morning. AU Small Finance Bank is having a decent session. RBL Bank reported... Uh, a very strong growth uh, in terms of deposits once again. It's more about deposit mobilization than the growth in advances this quarter because that's where the fight is. And a lot of these banks, the ones on your screen, they've, they seem to have done a decent job. So that's one active side of the market. Uh, beyond that, some more names on the mid-cap screen. Uh, mid-caps are not outperforming large caps today for a change. But uh, individual names are always out there. So Aster DM, now 9% higher, 
is one that pops up. 5% up on Scient. We were just talking about IT. That's up and about. Uh, so quite a few of the movers and shakers over here. Zomato, by the way, has been quite smart as well. Let's just pull up Zomato. Yeah, still 3 percent 3 on the higher side. So uh, plenty of action in the, in the broader markets. The advanced decline ratio has improved. Just pull up the lines now. You've got uh, over 1,400 stocks advancing. So the green line is once again above the red line. Uh, so not too bad in the broader markets. Nigel? Well, that's right. You know, Sirbi, the piece that you spoke about on HDFC Bank, the deposit growth has been appreciated. So we'll address the fundamental part of that news, but we'll also address the technical part of the news. Whether or not the FI ownership has come down enough for it to get an added weight on, uh, on the MSS. So we'll address that data point as well in the next five to ten minutes or so. But besides the IT names that move to the high point of the day, Asian Paints as well has seen a big up move. The stock is now up closer on two and a half percent. And bulk of that move has come in in the last 60 to around 90 minutes. So Asian Paints may be in fact post the recent underperformance. That one's putting its hand in there and getting counted. How do you address trade though? Final 60 minutes coming up. Mitesh Tucker is back with us. Well, Mitesh, we started off in style. Then we saw a sharp intraday dip. But that dip got bought into yet again. Your view. So, in fact, that dip, you know, kind of did shake us out because some positions were taken out given the fact that we kind of opened above the 22, 530 level and then started trading below it. So, we had pruned a long position, that, but these kind of things happen in volatility. But the most important part here is that the bank nifty looks the stronger of the two indices in the short term, despite the fact that it's the nifty which has given the breakout above the earlier highs. The chart structure for a lot of banking names, you know, which enjoy a good weight in the bank nifty, like HDFC Bank, Excess Bank, ICICI Bank is quite positive. So maybe we are leaning slightly towards the uh, financial side. Uh, in fact, uh, for the time being, you know, while we were just talking about uh, uh, HDFC Bank being the uh, biggest gainer, one of the biggest gainers uh, in the index today, I think the other uh, stocks over here also, you know, look very good. And uh, I would uh, recommend a buy on Excess Bank uh, with the disclaimer that you recommend to start clients. Excess Bank is a buy with a stop at about uh, 1050 and look for targets of about 1100. Uh, three to about 11 and five on the upside over here. And the other one is City Union Bank. It's been a recommendation earlier. Uh, it's kind of slightly come up from the day's high, but uh, uh, keeping a stop below 150, I would suggest a long for targets of 160. Mm, okay. Mitesh, uh, you know, we'll come back to you uh, for more perspective, more ideas in a bit from now. But let's focus on that story which was flashing at the bottom of the screen, right? Uh, this is Jayaprakash Group. Jayaprakash Associates, the flagship company, which of course has been, uh, you know, undergoing, uh, I mean, it's been uh, troubled for a while in the uh, <clears throat> NCLT, uh, but they could, uh, could perhaps be a, a ray of hope. So on uh, the latest in terms of trying to resolve the debt now uh, involved, and this is all, of course, what we're learning from sources, NARCL is looking to acquire the company's debt from banks. Ritu is here. She's uh, got details on this story. Ritu, afternoon. Good afternoon, Prashant. You know, it's it's been seven years and counting for the Jayaprakash uh, Associate debt resolution, and now it seems there's some movement on that front uh, with the lenders this week receiving a binding offer from the National Asset Reconstruction Company to acquire the debt from banks. Now, we've been given to understand that earlier this week, NARCL made an offer of nearly 10,000 crores to acquire the entire debt that banks currently hold uh, for Jayaprakash Associates. But of course, you know, at the moment, given that there's RBI's directions that stand, which is told banks to take the company for resolution under the insolvency and bankruptcy code, the lenders would require the Reserve Bank of India's not to proceed with this. Uh, we're also given to understand that if NARCL's offer, which is currently under evaluation by banks, is accepted, the process is such that they would have to invite counter bids under a Swiss challenge method. And, you know, if there are no other counter bids, of course, it'll be NARCL's bid that is accepted or otherwise we'll have to see how that proceeds. But at this stage, it is still being evaluated. But the offer is binding in nature is what we've been given to understand. Uh, in terms of recovery for lenders, now, given that this account has been default for a long period of time, uh, banks have fully provided for it. So anything that comes in terms of an offer from NARCL, which as an ARC would require about 20% as upfront cash payment and the remaining in the form of security receipts would count as recovery uh, for these lenders that are involved. There are 22 large banks that have exposure to Jayaprakash Associates, ICICI Bank, State Bank of India and IDBI Bank are some of the key ones. Okay, all right, Ritu, thanks a lot for joining in and giving us that exclusive story. But let's turn our attention to HDFC Bank. The fundamental news with regard to the operational update we'll get to in just a bit. But the MSCI angle, that's something that we'll be focusing on. 
in the last 90 minutes, 60 minutes actually or so, we did get the shareholding pattern. And out there, the FI holding has come down. And that's why, in fact, it's opened up some part of a headroom in terms of foreign ownership. But has it reduced by enough? To help us out with that analysis, Sriram Velayudan, the Vice President of Ordinary Research at IFL Securities, joins us. Uh, hi, Sriram, and thanks a lot for joining in. It must be very, very busy. You must be getting a lot of calls as well. But we're just doing some rough math with them. And it appears, yes, the FI ownership has come down, but it's not fallen by enough. And that's why it could miss out on that weight increase from the MSCI. You give us your first thoughts. So, Najib, hi. Uh, so, the mass quarter shareholding was released a uh, few minutes back. Uh, interestingly, the room has opened up. Uh, all this while, uh, one, if one looks at the flows and all, it was evident that FPIs have been seller in this name. The room has opened up till 24.95 percentage, which is short of five basis points. Uh, basis the methodology for an weight increase. Now, uh, now what I would like to highlight is we have to be cognizant of the fact that when the stock got added post merger, despite of the stock having a room of about 15 percentage at 17, 17 and a half, it was the index provider had used an adjustment factor of half because they wanted to avoid the risk of reverse turnover. Correct. Uh, though it should have had an adjustment factor of one. Uh, for avoiding the risk of reverse turnover, they used it. Uh, they used half as the adjustment factor. So we will have to wait for clarity from the index provider uh, because it entails a very big churn. And like you know, the index providers are quite sensitive to the churn value in the stock. It will entail almost an inflow of $3 billion. But basis the methodology, it isn't fulfilling the condition. It fell short by five basis points. All right. Uh, Sridham, just uh, to ask you a counter question, as you have uh, detailed that to us, the number is coming at around 24.95%. Yes. It should have been at around 25%. And that's how that five Correct. basis points is the miss. Correct. But, you know, so now it's at the discretion of the index, of the MSCI. Have they Correct. made an exception in the past? That's point number one. And do you think this time around as well, that could be a possible... Uh, uh, you know, exception that they make. What is your take? Take us through history first and your expectation. Largely, Nigel, there hasn't been any exception. We have to be cognizant of this fact. But like you know, we haven't come across uh, a big uh, uh, churn stats as well, statistics as well. As I said, as I said, under the pretext of avoiding reverse turnover, so what I mean by, uh, by reverse turnover is, let's say, if I start with an adjustment factor of one, and if it would have led to almost two, two and a half, three billion buying by the FTIs, then again, they would have been compelled to reduce the adjustment factor. Correct. Because basis the methodology, now, if one goes back into the methodology for treating the adjustment factors, it should have been one in place of, in place of half as it had the foreign room of about 15 percentage. Correct. So in this case, it just fell short by five basis points, and we have a big uh, a churn inflow event as such. Correct. So uh, basically, if you look at the uh, quantum of uh, the churn that the weight up entails, you never know. MSCI might take a subjective call. But as I said, basis of methodology, it is not fulfilling the condition. And the final call lies with the index providers. All right, uh, <clears throat> Sriram, uh, great explanation. And thank you very much for joining us, uh, you know, in a very timely way uh, to help our viewers understand uh, some of uh, what may happen. I mean, MSCI, of course, as uh, you guys have been saying, will have to take a call. By the way, did you guys see uh, Samir Aurora's tweet on this? Yeah, what is it? I wanted to put this up, but we don't have it ready. He said it was, of course, a, a slightly uh, Samir being Samir, but he said <laughs> if lots of foreign investors have sold lots of HDFC Bank in the recent quarter, hmm. then lots of forereign investors will have to buy lots of HDFC Bank in the so therefore in the, 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 the wage increase is impossible. Yeah. So the room has to open, <laughs> but of course this is uh, in jest uh, and. Uh, you know, uh, but uh, funny. Well, uh, Devin Choksi is with us, Managing Director at uh, DR Choksi FinServe. Uh, Devin, good to have you with us here. Thanks very much uh, for uh, joining us. Uh, first of all, Devin, uh, you know, quick word on what we are seeing in, uh, actually the indication, not MSCI, but the indication from HDFC Bank, the business updates that we've, that uh, finance, banks, etc. have put out. Deposit growth uh, seems to be pretty healthy. Yes, Prashant. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Indeed, I think with around 25% kind of a growth that you are seeing in the deposits, I guess I think this is probably one of the best that one can possibly ask for in the coming period. I believe that I think the uh, fundamentals of the bank right, are remaining completely in shape. If you look at the loan portfolios also, I think the retail loan portfolio, corporate loan portfolio, and other commercial portfolios 
along with the housing finance portfolio. I guess I think the growth has been, I think, reasonably smart in each of these categories in this particular quarter. Maybe you can partly attribute to the March factor, wherein I think they have got sizably high amount of deposits because of the money coming into the bank accounts. But more or less, I think the advances growth also is suggesting that the bank is already 25 lakh crore AVM now. And I think that's where probably I think my eyes uh, get trained hereafter. That should this bank continue to grow at a healthy space, then possibility of, I think, four and a half year time, doubling the size, I think, is distinctly possible. And that's where I think one can keep an eye on. Maybe the second area where one can keep an eye on is, I think, how smartly they integrate the fintech platform at the front end for acquiring the customers on the retail side particularly and also at the same time, I think, processing loan effectively. If these two areas are taken care of properly, I believe that I think this bank looks reasonably promising. Current price to book value also remains, I think, on a comparatively lower side, if I have to put it this way. It can possibly give you the upside possibilities also at the same time. Mm. Uh, Devin, is there a risk that uh, margins continue to remain under pressure even in Q4 because of how aggressive uh, banks and BFCs have been to mobilize, you know, the deposits? Um, given that race for deposit mobilization, do you think it's going to come in at an increased cost and margins could you know, negatively surprise? Not much, I think. Maybe I think 10 basis point kind of an impact which may come because of the high cost of the fund in the deposit that I think these banks are currently experiencing. But uh, on the other side, on the lending side, with the book expanding, I guess I think they are in a position to pass over this cost. Maybe in a particular quarter, I think where the asset liability adjustment is taking place, this match is getting neutralized. Till that point of time, you might see some impact into the profits of the company. But I don't think it's much. I think on a size of uh, the balance sheet, I don't think that I think it will create uh, in, in a, a, a big indent or impact at the same time in a particular quarter's result. Okay, so those are, of course, all the financials that are in, uh, you know, in focus today. Uh, Devin, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining in. You know, Thank speaking you. about quarterly updates, uh, the other one that uh, the street is talking about today, of course, is DMART, Avenue Supermart, right? The numbers seem to be doing well and they're adding more stores. Uh, but what's your sense? Because this has been one of the, the bigger disappointing stocks, right? From just a price action point of view. Oh, okay. I don't think we have Devin immediately. I think we've just lost that link. So we'll go back to it. But I was just checking. DMART is, uh, is it still retaining most of its gains? Yes, it is. Three, three and a half percent up. So it's holding on after what was uh, a pretty favorable uh, quarterly update for Q4. So that's one stock that's in focus. Otherwise, markets are kind of cruising along. Along with HDFC Bank, you have uh, some more names. Titan, by the way, is doing really well. By the way, uh, Prashant, do you know gold prices are at 70,000 Indian rupees? And any... plus tax. Plus Remember tax. when Manisha yeah. told us, exactly. if you go to We're buy, it's 70,000 plus tax. I think, and you have any I thoughts? Think, I think both of you have spent some money on <laughs> <buying> gold recently. <laughs> we've you just spent really some time out. listening we're just to glad. Manisha with like awe and wonder. And we're just glad Ooh. we don't have to buy anymore. So, yeah, yeah. I, Nigel and Prashant, this question is to both of you. Gold I, price at 70,000. You know, now I applied for the sovereign gold bonds and I continue to hold it and I go on increasing my holding every time as well. So, I didn't miss out on anything. No, my wife is not very, very happy because she didn't get the physical oh, gold. God, but I, I, really? I, am, I am part. I am part of this. Uh, you know, I, I remember I had actually put out a piece uh, on our digital uh, uh, platforms as well, that yes, the markets are hot, but some exposure to gold. I'm happy I listened to Manisha, I'm listening to myself as well. And, uh, and it's, See, it's good. He's, he's, it's, he's done the prudent thing. He's, he's done the, the, you know, the digital way of buying gold and SGPs, yes. of course, are a great, great option. I mean, I think there's absolute consensus on that. And 2.5% percent but, yield uh, as well will be coming in. Nigel, what? what but I, I don't know if Navneet is listening. That, that's for another time. <laughs> what is this yield, yield on a business? Yeah? Go, you got you to feel the stuff. you got to take it out of the cupboard once in a while. Just it, bad that it back. you're not... Uh, <laughs> if you don't have those notion gains. No, but, but in all seriousness, just to tell our viewers, 2.5% yield, you don't have any problem of checking whether it's in your cupboard or not. And, you know, you have a lock-in and it's tax-free after that. So, I'm happy, Prashant, you missed out. But I'm sure you have plenty of gold. <laughs> But actually, I, I, you know, being a Malu, I've yeah, never, I've never, I've never, 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 never bought gold. So it's just passed on it's, from uh, one generation no, no, to another generation. It's passed on. Generation. It's passed on. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think uh, we'll take a quick I break. Think right? we We've take gone a on break, yeah. about gold, and uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's of course at a new all-time high. It's a, a fantastic ra rally that we've seen in gold. 
Uh, Vinay Jay Singh is also going to be with us when we return. He's, of course, Managing Director, Portfolio Management Services at JM Financial Services. The conversation on the other side. Stay with us. Welcome back. 22,560 on the Nifty. It's 128 points higher. The Sensex is cruising along. It's a gain of about 500 points on the Sensex. Uh, you know, till yesterday, it felt like markets were just consolidating. The Nifty was in a range. But with today's up move, uh, the Nifty is up 1% this week. Uh, the mid-cap index is up 3.6% this week. And the small-cap index is a gain of 6.4% this week. So very quietly, the small-cap index has been, you know, outperforming every single day. And it's a 6.4% gain for the small-cap uh, index. In terms of the big movers, uh, you know, sectorally, well, metals is a star performer. Metal index is up 5.5% in the first four days. PSUs continue to rally, rally hard. The PSU index is up close to about 4%. On the way down, it's only the FMCG index, which is a bit subdued, and that's down half a percent. We're talking about the week-to-date gains so far. UPL is another stock which is on our radar. As sources um, say, UPL plans a launch of its seeds business, Advanta, in early FI25. Uh, I think Vivek is now with us to fill us in with the details. Vivek. Well, that's right. You know, like you mentioned, what we are picking up from our sources that, you know, there could be some value unlock exercises underway as far as UPL is concerned. We understand from our sources that the company is planning to launch the IPO of its seeds business. Now, remember, you know, with the earlier restructuring that the company had done, both the global as well as the domestic seed business is now under the entity known as Advanta Enterprises. We understand that this IPO could be launched as soon as early FI25 itself. We also understand that the bankers have already been appointed for this particular issue. So Bofa Securities, Morgan Stanley and JM Financial are the bankers for the issue. We understand that UPL is looking to divest close to 10 to 12 percent stake in this particular platform and in this particular company via the primary market offering. We also understand that the valuation that the company is targeting is close to $4 billion just for this particular business. Uh, now in terms of a benchmark for the valuation, remember, KKR had invested 13.3% uh, uh, you know, at valuation of close to 2.25 uh, in this particular company back in September 2023. So that is a valuation benchmark. We understand that uh, the company now is looking for a valuation of close to $4 billion. Uh, we understand that the entire proceeds uh, that will be uh, taken by UPL will be used to go ahead and deleverage its balance sheet, which currently the company is struggling with given the fact that it's most likely going to go ahead and miss its guidance that it had given for debt reduction by the end of FI24. So remember, the company had a debt of close to $3.7 billion at the end of December 2023. The company had a rights issue which was planned, which has been a little bit delayed, and the company had targeted to reduce its net debt to close to $2.5 billion by March 2024. So on account of that, this particular exercise becomes quite important for the company in order to deleverage its balance sheet. And debt has been the big problem, right, for UPL uh, and uh, the rating action, etc. All of that uh, over the last couple of months or so. Vinay Jay Singh, uh, Vivek, thank you very much for that story. Vivek Jay Singh is with us, Managing Director, Portfolio Management Services at JM Financial Services. Vinay, good to have you with us here. Uh, you, you know, you've liked the specialty chemical space. Uh, uh, we've spoken about that in the past. I'm not, I don't think uh, you have, I think you had stocks like Archean uh, in your portfolio and maybe a, a few others. UPL, I'm not so sure, but if you've heard the story and if you want to offer any comments there. 
So we do not own UPL. Uh, we are a little wary of companies which have a high debt. Uh, you know, the higher for longer interest rate syndrome, which is happening in the world, is something which we believe in. So we avoid uh, highly levered companies. Uh, having said that, obviously, what UPL is trying to do is reduce its debt. So, you know, as a company, it's doing the right thing. But, you know, we are avoiding this stock for now. Mm -hmm. I know IT has been in a void for you, but uh, increasingly the view is emerging that maybe IT earnings have bottomed out. And at some point of time, one, two, three quarters down the line, we will see a recovery. But from here on, maybe the downside is limited. Are you in the camp? Have you started looking at stocks outside of Cyan, Axis Cades? I know those were some of your, uh, you know, IT uh, stocks. But um, have you added on to, uh, you know, your tech portfolio? Uh, well, not really. Uh, we really believe that uh, U.S.'s slowdown is here to come, you know, wait for the next quarter and you'll hear more negative news than positive. If you just see the last week and see the 10-year and 2-year chart of U.S., both of them, as far as interest rates are concerned, you know, have gone up by 10 to 15 basis points. Uh, you're hearing more and more news that, you know, interest rates are not going to be cut in U.S. for a long period of time. Uh, earlier, people had expectations of it being cut in March, April, May. Now that could go, you know, as much as July, August, September. Uh, so what that means is there is pain, you know, which would come up uh, in U.S. Uh, the debt in U.S. is just mounting up uh, the U.S. Uh, Global debt is north of $34 uh, trillion. Uh, the GDP growth is less than the debt growth. So that tells you that there could be pain coming in. And I think that's the reason why, you know, these highly liquid, though well-valued, as you rightly said, you know, they're close to the bottom uh, names. We are looking at it virtually every day, uh, but we don't plan to nibble on it currently. We're happy of buying the ERND names, which have a, at least a 15 to 20% plus growth. Uh, the names you mentioned, both Access Cad and Scient, you know, have a 25, 30 and 20% growth respectively on the top line and a similar growth on the bottom line. So we are better off buying, you know, the higher growth stories where we know uh, that both defense and airlines is giving them good contracts. Mm, okay, all right, got it. So those are some of the IT names and IT themes. Vinay, great to have you uh, on the show today. So I want to talk to you about the, the sector of the day. And finally, it's large private banks that are uh, leading from the front and HDFC Bank is seeing plenty of green. But, you know, the, the question is, A, just tell us about your stance and how you're positioned. And B, uh, whenever FIIs come and they come and they start buying the index and then bank stocks go up, that, that we know. But I think uh, what I'm trying to understand is what could cause a pivot of domestic money, maybe a bit of a sector rotation, because this is a trade that's been waiting to take off for a very long time. Could it be, you know, good deposit growth this quarter? What's that metric that could perhaps trigger the, the churn in domestic money towards the large cap banks? So, you know, just before we reach, uh, you know, the trigger for uh, domestic money going to large cap banks, let's see the reason why they haven't gone. And if you look at what's happened in the last year for even FIIs, out of the 25 odd billion dollars which has flown into the country, uh, interestingly, the biggest sector which has gained is not financials, it's capital goods. You know, as much as five to five and a half billion dollars has gone there. Uh, a little similar number has gone to the financial space. Now, that as compared to a weightage in the index of 30% is clearly much lower. And I think the reason is if you're expecting interest rates to fall in the longer term, let's say six months, nine months down the line, and you're seeing, though the loan book is very, very strong, as you saw in the results or uh, the company data which came out, be it of HDFC or a couple of other names, uh, you know, 20% uh, average number, uh, which is very interesting. Valuations are interesting, but you're seeing deposit growths also increase. The cost of deposits also move up. And that means that, you know, NIMS could get squeezed a little bit. And more importantly, when, you know, interest rates fall down, people will have to mark their loan book or part of their loan book, loan book to the repo rate, which means you'll see a yield coming down you add that to the corporate growth. You know, today retail India is growing the loan book. Tomorrow, a couple of months forward, when you see the loan book being grown by the corporate India, you'll start seeing margins further go down. So yes, the quality of uh, Indian large cap banks are very solid, valuations are good. But I think the high growth years uh, are behind them. And now you're looking at 10 to 15% growth on a year end basis for the large cap. So you would buy them as stable compounders but you won't go over with them. And that's exactly what our stance is. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Vinay. Good afternoon and good to see you, Vin. I recall, you know, a few quarters ago, y'all were bang on. 
you all picked up mid cap cement and you all got in at very very low levels if i remember correctly orion cement was one stock that you all got in as well and the stock more than doubled from there but the last quarter has been a little bit sketchy for all cement companies and obviously when there is a bit of a tussle the smaller ones get hammered even more so how are you all positioned out there right now because from your buy price well you all will be way in the money but what do you do from now some of the stocks have come off 20 25 30% <laughs> as well so your take on mid cap cement and now we'll go with the large cap names right so this is an interesting space so overall you know if we use a bubble approach wherein you know in at least in ndpms portfolio we have over a 50% uh, weightage in small and mid cap and about 40% plus in large cap and cash being you know part of the other thing so as you rightly said you know mukunda analyst got orient cement very very well uh, hats off to him his point was at five times ev ebitda this stock can go up by 50% and even right uh having said that uh, we also had two uh, other uh, reasons why uh, you know the mid cap space did well one was the prices of coal uh, that was coming down uh, which meant margins would do well uh, inventories would go down which meant margins would do well and price would go up of cement uh, because of the demand uh, all of these uh, alluded to better margins which have happened but i think when you're looking forward in the cement sector especially in this quarter you're actually seeing exactly the opposite you're seeing the prices of cement have corrected by 3 4% uh you've seen coal prices being largely constant which means that margins could be under pressure uh, so i think the best of heydays for the cement sectors behind you but demand growth is going to be robust so incrementally the way we are looking at it it is time to look at large caps over mid caps uh, as we look at cement currently mm. um you like telecom you like the entire make in india play um what manufacturing what about a stock like tejas networks it's been a big multi bagger have you analyzed it and is it a part of your portfolio if it's not if it is why if it's not why sure uh see the way we look at telecom uh, really is are you looking at india speaking a lot more are you looking at data usage being a lot more are you looking at uh, the advantages to have uh, the power to increase your arpus and hence you know get more pi from the subscriber and i think all those answers come up in uh, happens to be a large cap stock but but in bharti airtel so technically that's where we are focused on you know if you look at uh, you know the company's arpus on a one year basis it's gone up by 10% you look at uh, the overall subscribers they've gone up by 4% Uh, so technically if you just multiply the two you'll see a 13 to 15% top line growth yes there is an africa problem but on the longer term you're seeing incrementally the company being fcf positive uh, due to the deleveraging story so that's really a simple reason why we like telecom when you look at telecom infrastructure uh, and that's where i think other companies come in including the names you mentioned what we see here there is a lot of squeeze in margins which happen and you got to depend a lot more on government Uh, so if you are playing the make in india story let's play the story where you have a story where you are replacing global products you know uh, like uh, let's say defense uh, or or even railways where you're playing the domestic growth story uh, you know companies like tejas network at least currently based on our thesis doesn't fit into either of the two plays and we see more attractive companies both in the manufacturing slash make in india or the telecom part which is why we haven't uh, bought that stock got it all right uh, and uh, you know when i what about consumer now again consumer it's been the same trends continuing for uh, well over a year right discretionary is doing well whether that is you know premium real estate or uh, you know you have names like titan which are doing really well and then there are staples which has kind of fallen by the way so i guess some of the reasons you mentioned growth concerns for banks and then i was thinking i mean staples aren't giving you anything just about mid single digit uh so do you see that piece changing at all and and you know how are you approaching it what do you like in consumer so you know consumer is one space where you know again i analyst anirudh has got it very right uh, you know the big issue was the demand overall is not growing as well as expected so if you were to talk about quarterly results that's one space which last quarter got the advantage of uh, margin improvement because commodity prices went down but you didn't see volume growth happen as well as you wanted it to Uh, apart from a few companies like let's say varun beverages which is gaining from you know just marriages and uh, you know parties happening or companies like uh, you know hotel industry where you're seeing so much of tourism go up or even jewelry you know you all spoke about uh, gold a little earlier 
uh, you know, gold jewelry is increasing. Uh, apart from these spaces, we are not really looking at the consumer space anywhere else. Uh, 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 maybe another one more name would be a company like a Bikaji, uh, you know, food space again, you know, which is fast moving consumer, you know, where you really buy it, uh, uh, eat it and, you know, uh, incrementally increase your consumption spend out there. But apart from these spaces, the, you know, the usual consumer names or staples, we think the growth is lacking, valuations are still not compelling. Uh, yes, they are high rows, uh, maybe they are like the IT sector close to the bottom. But you know, when we are looking at India, we are looking at growth in earnings and growth in uh, you know, the market caps. That's where we have a question mark and we are not touching them. Vinay, thank you very much uh, for uh, joining in and we look forward to chatting with you very soon. Need to get into a short break on that note. On the other side, we'll get you a check on what Dealing Rooms is saying in our segment, East Street Chatter. We get you a few BTST calls from our technical experts. Welcome back. Well, the markets have slipped a little bit from the top, though we're still holding comfortably at around 22,500. If you want a data point, well, the mid-cap index has moved into the red. Well, it's that point of the day, though, where we get to D Street Chatter. Nimesh joins us. Well, Nimesh, a bit of a switcheroo today. Yeah. Normally, we've been seeing that the mid and the small caps are outperforming. Today, you have the large cap names led by Big Boy HDFC Bank that's outperforming. Tell cool. us more. So, and again, uh, good recovery in the markets, yeah. right? We were down 100 points. That Correct. we've recovered very sharply from that and largely related by the large caps. Of course, HDFC Bank is helping, but in general, there is a there is a tail towards the large caps in today's market. The flow seems to be mixed. That's the overall feedback. But again, uh, that uh, you know, as you remember, I said yesterday as well that the flows are largely in the financial names, and that that continues in today's market as well. Even yesterday, the feedback was it's largely driven in the in the private bank stock. So mm. that trend continues in today's market as well. And thankfully, a lot of the updates from the financial market, uh, financial companies have been pretty pretty strong. So that's helping the helping the financial stocks as well. I guess from a trigger point of view, uh, you know, all eyes will be of course on the on the and the credit policy tomorrow. It's largely going to be a status quo, so no no big change there. But I guess earnings season, which is going to be longish long earnings season, that's going to be a big trigger to watch out for. I guess from a sector point of view, some bit of profit picking is seen in the OMC names. And I guess that's one niggling point, right? The macros, to some extent, the margin is slightly turning negative for India with crude at $90. So that is something to, to track going forward. But from a from a the positioning point of view, it looks like the momentum can continue. And and, and today for a change, it's led by uh, financials and that, that's been the big change for the last two days. That financials are well bid by large institutions. Well, that's right. And the Nifty Bank is at 48,000 odds. So now we're just a percent and a half away from fresh all-time highs. But Nimesh, don't remind me about the results he's in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And this is going to go until May, right? Yeah, so, so it's, it's a, going to be a long It's day. a long one. For me, it'll be yes. my 50th earnings season. So quite a long one. But tell us, Nimesh, what are the individual stocks? Okay, so in terms of individual names, the first stock in my list is uh, Protein E-Govern. Uh, a recent listing 
That's been buzzing for the last couple of days. I understand some bit of H&I interest is back, but do watch out for a large block deal as well. That can come very soon in that particular stock. So that's the first name. The second stock is Excite. That's been buzzing for, for the couple of days. Some good uh, buying from larger H&I is what I understand. And looks like uh, the lithium battery uh, you know, plant is pretty much on track and hence some bit of traction there. The third stock is Pfizer. This is interesting. Been consolidating in, the, in a narrow range of late, but within the MNC, this is one stock which is picked up by, uh, by a leading uh, domestic uh, PMS of late. So that's the reason why you're seeing delivery volumes there. And the last one is Avas Financial. There, there were multiple block deals in today's, today's trade. I understand a leading long only fund of the seller. So even uh, there, the disclosures would be quite interesting in Avas Finances. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Nimesh, for that uh, interesting list as always. Mitesh is back with us for a few BTST calls or reverse trades. Mitesh, a bit of a sell-off in the mid-cap space. The mid-cap index is now in the red. Um, what would your trades be? Well, so I think, you know, it's a kind of mixed bag as the markets. But uh, one thing is very clear is that the banking and the financial names uh, are showing more strength. So, uh, be long over there. That about, I think, you know, a couple of IT names are reversing. So I have BTST on LTIM with a stop below 4,900. And look for a target of around 4,970, 4,980, maybe even higher uh, for tomorrow. And the other one which I uh, like, that's uh, Hero Motors on the sell side. So we'll take one STBT as well. Uh, keep a stop above uh, levels of uh, 45, 45 here. Target of 4,490, uh, 4,485 can Right, uh, <clears throat> Mitesh, thanks very much uh, for that. So those are uh, sort of near-term trading ideas. Avenue Supermarts is the other one which is rallying today after reporting robust uh, business update. Mangalam is here with more details. Mangalam. Well, for DMART, this time around, it's been a good update. The revenues for the company have grown by about 20%, 19.8% on a standalone basis, to be precise. What's also important is that uh, this is higher than the four-year compounded average growth of close to around 14%. And add to that, it implies that there is a high single to low double digit sort of same store sales growth as well. Because in the same period year on year, the store expansion has been around 12.6% as well. And speaking about store additions as well, the fourth quarter is when you see the company typically report uh, the highest number of store openings. And this time around, they've done close to 24 store openings, which is higher than even what the most uh, part of the street was anticipating. And it's uh, gone past their guidance of 40 stores this year by opening 41 stores. What needs to be seen, however, for DMART is what is the operational uh, revenue mix right now? Has FMCG or non-FMCG assortment come back to its pre-COVID levels? Because that will give you a peek into how margins are likely to be. And we'll also have to see the scale up of DMART ready. The stock had been an underperformer over the last three years. But over the last month or so, it's done extremely well. A couple of brokerages pretty bullish on DMART as well. Okay. Uh, all right. Got that. Uh, Manglam, so that's DMART. Let's also talk about uh, Dabur. You know, any, any sign, any suggestion here that things are improving on the volume front? Well, no signs or no suggestions of improvement, and which is what explains uh, a 5% downtick that we've seen on Dabur as soon as, uh, you know, the numbers, or ever since the numbers uh, or the, uh, you know, quarterly update has come by. There is consumer sluggishness. In fact, there's no respite from that. The company said that they will report mid-single-digit overall growth. Yes, there was some recovery in rural as uh, there were price rollbacks that the company did and the gap between urban and rural is narrowing. Is it still out of the woods? Not sure. They're awaiting, you know, monsoon and some more sowing data to come by for them to actually say that there are visible green shoots. What has done well for them is home and personal care, which has grown in high uh, single digits. And that's uh, largely a positive. But the other negatives, it's uh, offset by the negatives that we saw in their FNB business, which on the high, back of a high base is going to report low single digit growth and also their healthcare business which uh, of course because of the delayed winter will not do too well healthcare comprises a lot of their chavan prash products as well uh, the international business for them largely uh, doing well double digit constant currency growth but out there currency devaluation has play played uh, uh, you know uh, some sort of party pooper and which is why we'll see an impact of that in their Egyptian business and some of their Middle Eastern businesses as well. Importantly, uh, the margins of the company will expand and that's something that everyone in the FMCG space was expecting. The only thing to watch out for is revenue growth and that unfortunately hasn't come by. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the pivot. The market's also waiting for. Margins are fine, commodity costs fall, you have operational efficiencies and margins have been good for these companies. The issue is volume growth. Thanks for that, Manglam. Well, let's uh, welcome in our next guest on the show. We have Sudeep Bandhupadhyay joining in. And let's take both of these stocks actually one by one with Sudeep. 
So they put to have you on as always. Let's start with Dabur. I mean, the disappointment is really telling and it's, it's visible on the screen. But uh, what would you say? I mean, uh, there are also market wizards who say you buy great businesses when, you know, you're in a down cycle. But I don't know, does that, does that hold here? Would you take that approach? Well, Subhi, I've been positive on Dabur, uh, you know, and hoping that the rural consumption will pick up. But unfortunately, the numbers clearly are showing uh, that uh, that is yet to happen. There is definitely pressure. And we'll have to wait for the, uh, you know, the, the, the consumer demand to really come back. Uh, uh, amongst the large FMCG companies, Dabur had the highest exposure to rural India. Uh, the number two would be HUL. And uh, under the circumstances, with the kind of, uh, you know, depressed consumption environment in rural India, uh, they are bound to suffer. Uh, uh, we, of course, have to wait for the monsoon and see what kind of uh, monsoon predictions and monsoon uh, uh, is actually uh, happening uh, in, during the monsoon seasons, forthcoming monsoon seasons, before uh, we can take a conclusive view on the future of Dabur. But to your point, whether we should buy uh, you know, these kind of businesses when they're down, I completely agree with that logic. I think if somebody is bullish on FMCG uh, for the long term, I think this is a great time to buy both Dabur and HUL. Okay, those are two picks coming in, Dabur and HUL. Let me ask you about the other stock again, consumer, not FMCG, but uh, you know, pure FMCG, but uh, DMART, Avenue Supermarts. This has been a, been a bit of a disappointing uh, play for the last, actually several months, several, several years now. It's underperformed the market. What's your sense? Uh, do you see a bottom? So we, I think, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and watch. DMART gave scorching growth and, uh, you know, really rewarded the shareholders for a very, very long time. Now I think what's happening is competition is intensifying. And I'm not talking about competition from Reliance Retail only. The competition is coming from a Zipto, a Blinkit, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a Instacart, and all these kind of, uh, uh, you know, quick delivery players as well. So under these circumstances, we'll have to see how this online business and quick delivery business impacts uh, <clears throat> DMART and whether DMART, their online piece, really picks up to counter uh, or, 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 you know, really better some of these uh, you know, new newbies. Now, this is all a very, very fluid state. So fundamentally and structurally, I believe that there are a lot of moving pieces as far as, uh, you know, DMART and, uh, you know, uh, these kind of uh, brick and mortar retail is concerned. So we'll have to wait and watch and see how things move. Now, the other point I would like to mention is that the margins will be, under pressure for a considerable period of time. That's our view. And under the circumstances, it's better to wait and watch, particularly considering uh, the valuation at which some of these stocks are quoting. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Sadeep. Good afternoon and good to see you in. I wanted your view on Vedanta. And the news that's coming in is that they have finally started mining in Goa. Just to tell our viewers that I don't know part of their business is a very small part of their business. And in terms of an SOTP, it's very, very minimum. But it's a sentiment positive because after close to around seven years, we're seeing that mining is resuming in Goa. The uh, iron ore that comes out of Goa is very, very low quality as well. So that mostly has to be exported. But besides the iron ore piece, uh, Sadeep, how do you view this stock? One of the big underperformers, you don't know what the promoter does next. But if base metals are going to rally, crude oil prices are going to stay elevated. Would you give it uh, a look in or would you say there are other options that rather play the other? No, no, definitely, Nigel, I'll give it a look in. In fact, uh, for the last uh, couple of months, I've been uh, talking about Vedanta and I've, I've been mentioning that if you are a bit aggressive investor, please go and buy Vedanta. Uh, you know, uh, the logic is absolutely what you outlined. We don't know what the promoter will do and there are a lot of uncertainties as far as governance and other issues are concerned. But, but structurally, I think the entire metal pack uh, and where Vedanta has a significant presence, they are, they are in metals in a big way and uh, with what is happening in China, what is happening, uh, what is going to happen as far as the interest rates in the US are concerned, does support uh, the metals rally. And that definitely benefits Vedanta and the kind of uh, spread of metals they have, nobody else has. So Vedanta at, at the valuation at which it is quoting also is not exorbitant and can definitely be looked into and bought in uh, for a uh, you know, bit of a uh, aggressive point of view. Okay, all right, uh, Sudeep, you know, we'll just come back to you. Tomorrow, of course, it's all going to be the RBI, right, uh, which we'll watch out for. We'll hear the governor 
on a variety of issues, not just the policy. I mean, there are a couple of other things as well. This will be the first time that we'll hear from the governor. <clears throat> and of course, the opportunity to ask questions since all those actions were taken uh, on uh, names, you know, companies like IAFL and uh, the gold loan front. And there was, of course, JM Financial, etc. as well. So uh, apart from the policy, there is a, a few other things which will be on the radar. But from the policy itself, what is the expectation? My colleague Ritu is here to bring us uh, exactly that. CNBC TV 18's poll with regards to the RBI policy. Ritu. Don't expect any changes in rates or stance just yet, but watch out for the macro forecasts with a potential GDP growth upgrade on the cards, according to a CNBC TV 18 poll. There's also an expectation that RBI is going to signal that it will keep liquidity comfortable. Now, if all of this comes true, it is going to be bullish for stocks. 60% of our respondents said that they are going to focus on RBI's growth and inflation projection, with others highlighting that they're going to watch out for any signal that the stance could be shifted towards neutral or if the tone turns a bit more hawkish given the exuberance in the system which RBI has been highlighting. No one is expecting rates to be tinkered with in this policy. In fact, most of our respondents are also expecting the stance of the policy to be left unchanged at withdrawal of accommodation, with just about 10% expecting that RBI will prepare the markets for a shift in stance going ahead. The first rate cut is only expected in the October policy later this year by most of the respondents, with some expecting it by August, but no earlier than that. On the liquidity front, the respondents largely expect RBI to signal comfortable liquidity. Now, since the last policy, liquidity conditions have eased and RBI has been actively managing liquidity with multiple interventions at both ends and participants expect that RBI will continue with this and also reiterate its preference to stay nimble with market operations. The inflation forecast for the current fiscal is also unlikely to be changed just yet. Now, while vegetable prices continue to remain volatile, the RBI could find some comfort in the softening core inflation. But on the growth front, half of the respondents are expecting an upward revision with the domestic growth data remaining robust. The RBI is expected to raise the GDP growth forecast for FI25 anywhere between 7.1 to 7.5%. As per 50% of our respondents, the other half are expecting it to be left unchanged. As to how the governor will sound absolutely even is the broad consensus. So rates on hold, stance unchanged, some tinkering in the macro projections are the expectations that we are going into this policy with. Of course, the governor's comments in the press conference later about recent regulatory measures, for instance, against financial entities, the larger message from those are also things that we are going to keenly watch out for. Ritu, thank you very much uh, for that. We'll get into a break. We'll come back with more on the markets. Welcome back. It's still a century on the Nifty. That's doing well. The Nifty Bank is 500 points high and holding strong. Well, let's get you some market opinion that we got earlier today. We spoke to Mr. Dheeraj Agarwal, the Managing Director at Ambit Investment Managers, 
to discuss his outlook on the markets as well as his top sector bets. Let's listen in to what he had to tell us. Two things are helping the market sentiment in the near term. Uh, there is a clear dovish tilt by the Fed in the March 20th meeting. Now, although they keep on going a little bit of back, and, little bit back and forth in the subsequent statements, but I think on the whole the tilt is uh, dovish. And second, uh, uh, our strategist was telling us that uh, most two months or three months going into elections, the markets have been strong. Optimism is building up that number of unfinished agendas of the last term could get completed in the next term, etc. This always happens. So, uh, yeah, we could see a near term bit of a move. Medium term, uh, I think the markets will continue to be choppy. Consumption weakness, which started with only rural weakness a quarter or two quarters ago, now seems to be percolating upwards even to the urban products and demand. That's a little bit of a worry. Two-wheeler theme I liked, but I from the current prices and the current valuations, I'm slightly more cautious. Uh, the stocks have done phenomenal run. For example, Bajaj has done almost 50% kind of a run over the last five or six months. Uh, Hero has done beautifully. Mm -hmm. uh, so has TVS. I think in terms of sectors and specific uh, push with respect to either the CapEx plan or PLI, the government has already done a fantastic job. Some change, structural changes on the agriculture side, which was also tabled and pulled back uh, in the previous term. I hope some of it comes back because it, it's time we do some, uh, uh, touch some of these holy cows uh, in the country. And same for land acquisition. So uh, the, the next big thrust India requires is manufacturing. Okay, that's uh, the view from uh, Dheeraj. By the way, Devi's laboratory has been moving up for five consecutive days in a row. And this week, the stock has seen a rally of nearly about 9%. Earlier, we had a Bank of America upgrade on Devi's laboratory. I think it came about two days back. But it's been five consecutive days of gains where they raised the target price to 4025 And they believe that the two-year earnings downgrade cycle for Devi's laboratory has come to an end. Uh, the stock has underperformed, but now it's time to look at Devi's laboratory, which is why they have a buy call. Uh, Sudeep, uh, in the pharma pack, Devi's laboratory? Well, I think uh, definitely there is a merit in looking at some of these uh, uh, stocks which were beaten down significantly. Uh, as far as overall pharma is concerned, uh, you know, my view remains that uh, the pricing pressure on generics in US is real, and that hasn't yet disappeared. Uh, so, uh, you know, Indian pharma companies, which are uh, predominantly uh, selling in U.S., they will continue to face uh, pricing headwinds. Uh, so while, uh, you know, they're doing quite well, whether it's a Sun, whether it's a Dr. Eddie's uh, and, and, the, and the likes uh, Lupin, they are doing well. They are improved efficiencies. They have done a whole lot of, uh, you know, cost cutting. But in spite of that, I think uh, the, the, you know, the good old uh, days of pharma are not yet back. We'll have to wait and watch. I will still prefer India-focused pharma companies, that is, companies which are predominantly focused on India. Mankind Fund Pharma continues to be a favorite of ours, with about 95 98% of their sales being in India. Torrent Pharma is a favorite stock. And I think some of these stocks needs to be looked at even at current levels. Hey, by the way, today will go down as extremely, uh, you know, uh, good for a lot of small finance bank stocks. Been making that point. Ojeevan, 6.5% six, six up. Suryode, small finance bank, about 12% higher. There is AU, small finance bank, about 2-3% higher as well. So, Deep, so finally, not sure if it's the update, something else, excitement ahead of the policy, whatever it is, but a big move on a lot of these small lenders. Uh, would you look at a small finance bank stock right now? And if yes, which one? And I think, uh, you know, so, so be a lot of these small finance banks uh, still have a significant part of their portfolio uh, on microfinance assets. Uh, and I think the overall microfinance as a sector has been doing very well. The COVID-related, uh, you know, write-offs and the challenges in the portfolio is a thing of the past. The demand is extremely strong. And the other side of the uh, balance sheet, which is deposit mobilization, has uh, improved significantly. So under the circumstances, both the sides of the balance sheet for these small finance banks, predominantly, uh, you know, having microfinance assets are working very well. AU Finance is, of course, in a different league. Other than AU Finance, the other small finance bank, both the both the sides of the balance sheets have been performing well, and that has uh, led to this kind of a you know upward movement. Is what my belief is. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, uh, Sudeep, I think we did discuss. Uh, uh, did we talk about ABFRL? 
a couple of days back? I mean, we did, we did, we did discuss <laughs> ABFIL. And yeah, uh, I'm I mean, positive, Prashant, on the this demerger because Madura brands were not getting their dues. So segregating yeah. the company will ensure that the Madura brands gets valued separately. And the sum of parts is obviously going to be significantly higher than what ABFRL was uh, doing. Hmm. I mean, uh, the group itself, in, in a way, is com uh, coming back, right? In a, uh, in a way, uh, a wonderful idea. There is AB cap the capital. Uh, some of these underperforming businesses, and of course, I mean, the cement businesses, etc., they're market leaders. But there's enough underperformance there, which is starting to get corrected. Absolutely right. And look at Grasim, uh, the, the, what happened with the paints launch. Uh, I think they started with the paints launch. Of course, Ultratech continues to be a, a leader. And uh, you know, also my favorite in the cement space, uh, that, that definitely is worthwhile looking at Ultratech, even at current levels. Uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, AB Capital is concerned, I think, again, that's a good buy. Uh, if you buy AB Capital or remain invested in AB Capital, you're getting participating in almost the entire spectrum of financial services, whether it's an asset management, uh, whether it's uh, life insurance, whether it's health insurance, uh, whether it's a lending uh, piece. So I think it's, it's a, uh, with financialization of savings happening at a rapid pace, I think they are in a good wicket and uh, definitely uh, can be looked at. Uh, you know, uh, ABFRL, of course, the demerger is the step in the right direction. Uh, uh, you know, people used to compare with Trent, but look at Trent, where Trent is and where ABFRL is. But with this, uh, you know, demerger, I think uh, uh, they will start getting a much better valuation as a combined, uh, two businesses combined. Mm. No, uh, good points, uh, uh, Sudeep. You know, we're not suggesting that, uh, but either it's you, the mind goes there when you think about what's happened with, say, for example, the Mahindra Group, so many listed entities, and uh, many of them have seen a re-rated Tata Group before that. Uh, and of course, uh, there is a bit of a, a turn happening in some of these specific businesses for uh, the Aditya Birla Group as well. Uh, Sudeep, great to have you with us here. Appreciate your time, and uh, thanks very much uh, for joining us. We'll end 100 points higher. We'll end at 22,545 which I think is where we opened, uh, approximately where we opened. Uh, so there was a 50-point sell-off from 230 to about 315, but I think we've made up for most of it.